I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 15th of October, 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. Welcome to the show. Today, we started off the day in San Jose, Costa Rica, and we are doing a travel day to get back to Leon, where I'm filming now. Obviously, we made it safe and sound, or I wouldn't be able to be doing this episode, so no big surprises. I'm going to be talking about two big things today. One is my day, which is a travel day, so that's interesting, especially for those of you looking to do the overland journey from Costa Rica to Nicaragua, and also going to be talking about our new decision to get a car for those who watch the show you know that in the last two days we got a car for the first time and we've been talking for a year and a half about how we don't have a car and now we have one so that's gonna be interesting I think to talk about the decision factors that made us decide we wanted to get a car and we can talk about why we got the car that we did so first off here's our day it's Saturday morning we had to be up super early my alarm went off at 4 a.m. I got up got ready and was basically ready to go by 420 it's actually 421 when Dominica's alarm went off for her to get up and get the kids up. So I was done and out of the way and just wrapping up my backpack and stuff, my last minute charging items while they were getting ready. We only have the one bathroom, so it takes a bit of serial uh, work to get everybody able to get out the door. And that makes it a bit rough because it's so early in the morning. So I'm running around doing stuff like getting more toilet paper from the hostel and uh, making sure that they know that we're leaving and all that stuff first thing in the morning. So I was doing that. Well, they got ready, but we did really well. Um, as we've noticed in Costa Rica, we tried to get an Uber to take us to the bus station and it took a good half hour. The hostel's like, oh no, they're so fast. They show up in a minute. Nope. Just like we found the other day, the first one canceled on us. The second one took a good 15 to 20 minutes to get to us. That's not terrible as long as they actually arrive. What's bad, and it seems to be a trend, is they wait 15 minutes and then decide you're not worth picking up after they've already committed to it and don't show up. And if you have what happened to us the first day, they don't show up and they charge you, which is a problem because then you have to dispute and deal with the fact that you're getting charged for rides that never arrived and screwed you over because you're you're stuck waiting, right? You're either in a dangerous area like we had on the first day or today need to make it at a specific time. Luckily, we allotted a lot of time knowing that Uber is unreliable and we're able to do just fine, but it was not not the best experience. The driver that actually picked us up was fantastic. Like he was great. But you know, one made us wait a good 15 or 20 minutes before leaving us high and dry. So something to be aware of, Costa Rica, Uber, not reliable. And that was, this is, we were there for five days. We had like at least five or six cancellations. Absolutely ridiculous for the few times that we took Uber during that time. And it's, it's the main way to get around. Like, what else do you do? Yeah, there's taxis. They are sketch. Don't, don't do that. Like Uber is certainly safe. It's just, my gosh. Um, and it's way cheaper too. So very important. Uh, but you really have to allow a lot of time. I almost for real, could have walked, not with the luggage, to the bus terminal as fast as Uber was able to get us there because they took so long and canceled uh, the first times. So we did manage to get our Uber and we got to the bus terminal just a few minutes before the official time they were supposed to get there, which is 5.30 for a six o'clock departure. There is a bit that you have to do, so uh, it's important to, to arrive uh, a little bit early. It was not as scary in daylight as it was in the dark a few days ago, but it was still really troublesome going into uh, the bus terminal because it is surrounded by a tent village um, of homeless, and I believe they're refugees, and that makes it a little bit better that they're refugees rather than just people who are living around uh, the, the bus terminal. But it is a terrible location to have your refugees staying. There's got to be a way that San Jose can move refugees to someplace that makes more sense because a huge number of homeless step, stuck on the street in a point of public transportation is immensely dangerous for everyone. The people who are coming and going, it hurts the economy of the country because it, it gives a terrible impression for tourism and it's dangerous for the people in the tent city. That's not a safe spot to have them. If they're really refugees, you want them somewhere where you can protect them and hopefully uh, help them either move on to another location or get them into jobs or some kind of care program whatever, it, it's just, it's a rough. And I don't know that they're refugees, but they appear to be. And there's a lot of people claiming to be Venezuelan refugees all around the country, but I don't know if that's really true. There's no way to verify that, but a lot of people claim it. Um, you definitely in Costa Rica get a number of uh, homeless and begging people all throughout the city that we're not used to here in Nicaragua. So that was a big negative, but if they're really Venezuelan refugees who have nowhere to go, then 
I feel really badly and, and hopefully people are taking care of them, but there's no way to know that that's what they are, right? At least not for us as, as foreigners, like foreigners to the region, um, we don't identify the accents. Like there's no way for us to really know if someone's Venezuelan or not, especially in a place like Costa Rica where we can barely identify the Costa Rican accent or tell what the people look like. You know, you're really guessing, right? So, and of course, they only approach us as tourists. So they see us and then they go straight at us to go beg. And it's like, well, obviously, you know, we're not, we're not falling for that, right? If you were begging from everybody equally, then I would accept that you're, you're potentially a refugee. But if you're only coming after people who don't know better very likely, then I have to assume you are not. So that's, that's a big negative. They are everywhere, all, all through downtown, through the good neighborhoods, by the bus terminal, like everywhere. Uh, so, but we got past that, got in. Um, there were tons of people using the bus terminal just in line for buses and stuff. Uh, for the Nika Expresso that we're taking, really easy to went right up to the window. They're like, you can go to the bus. No one in line, just go right up to the bus, take your luggage, they put it underneath. It's very, very easy. Uh, I do recommend you get there at 5.30 or 30 minutes before your departure. Uh, you do want to have time to get your luggage in, get your stuff checked. They want to look at your passports, all those things. It takes a few minutes. You get, we have assigned seats. So that's nice and easy. Our air conditioning worked today, so no problems. We were all set for uh, Paul to come get us at the border if there was no working air conditioning, but it worked fine. It was actually a little bit chilly for some of the day. they will take chilly any day. Not a complaint in any way whatsoever. And uh, uh, so at six o'clock, we were on our way. As we left, I did manage to film a little bit of the tent city so you guys can see what we're talking about. Now, during the day, they pack this up. So this is partially packed up when you're seeing it. People are out having coffee, starting to leave. I don't know what they do during the day, but during the night, this gets really, really packed and is mobs of people in the street. During the day, the buses are able to get through. There's still a lot of people, but it's nothing like it is at night. So if you see this during the day, it doesn't look all that scary because you can tell that people are just you know milling about but they are not angry yelling mobs. And at night they are like, it's, it's really aggressive and there's so many more people and the buses can't go through, the cars can't get through. It's a bit different. So you, this gives you an idea, but you have to picture that it's not the same. This is, I don't want to film it at night and you wouldn't see much. Uh, and the windows of the buses are tinted. So it's very hard to get anything in the dark. Uh, we got underway. It was a nice drive through the city because we didn't get to see a lot of it in daylight when we came in. It was dark when we when we arrived uh, on the 11th. So today we got to see the western part of the city from the bus. That was cool. Got to see the big Sabana Park uh, and all that stuff. Um, and we didn't go actually out to the Pacific like we did on inbound. Cut up uh, northbound a little bit earlier and made better time to the border. It was a very comfortable bus ride. They didn't make any stops on the way to the Costa Rican border, uh, which made it quite a bit shorter than it was on the way in just for that part. Got to the border, I think at about 10 o'clock in the morning, if I remember correctly. And uh, most everyone moved through pretty quickly. We were the only um, Americans on the bus and just about the only non-Nicaraguans uh, or Costa Ricans as far as we know. Uh, just about everybody was from one of the two countries and just going back and forth, which is a very normal route for people to, to move. There's a lot of families are on both sides of the border. It's extremely common. Uh, there was one girl there from France. Uh, she did not have, and I forgot to mention this on the short video that I did uh, the other day, I need to add that. Uh, she did not have a uh, hotel reservation in Nicaragua and that caused her to get delayed. She ha you have to have a reservation somewhere in Nicaragua to give as an address and their phone number so that you can come in. It's easy to deal with, but it is something you have to have a plan. You don't have to have an onward ticket, but you do have to have that. Um, so she got stuck for a while trying to deal with that. We had to wait an hour um, because we're Americans, because I do a lot of vlogging, we don't know, uh, but they definitely asked a lot of questions about the vlog, about my Instagram, which is at Ziff Traveler, for those who don't follow me there, go ahead. And uh, not a lot interesting there, but you can that's where you can like communicate with me. And uh, uh, always someone in the background who wants to be on the show. And um, uh, so they, they spent about an hour and then the commandant came out after about an hour. And, he, and this is funny, he actually comes out and looks at me and goes, Scott Allen? I'm like, yeah. He's like, back to Costa Rica. And I look at him and then I kind of smirk and then he smirks at me. He's like, ah, come on. And he's got all of our passports and he just walks up and he's like, they're good, they're good. Just let him. And, uh, you know, he had to help him fill out because we have a lot of different information than other people. So we tend to be, even if they want to let us through, we tend to be a bit confusing because our paperwork's different. Uh, so he helped them with that at the border. And so we were the last ones getting back to the bus. That was a little bit scary because it's like the bus could in theory leave us there. I've never heard of that happening, but you know, you worry when you're the last ones. Do they know we're here? Are they watching? I mean, it's assigned seats. They know who's missing, but it was, we were a little bit worried about that, but it went just fine. No problems. They didn't give us any hassle whatsoever at the border. They just took, everyone else took about five minutes and we took about an hour. 
um, which is scary because they're, we were waiting for them. They were off in another room, like looking at paperwork or whatever. Uh, but at the end of the day, they didn't ask us any detailed questions. They didn't say anything was wrong. It was nothing like that. It just took a long time um, to the best of our knowledge. So that is, uh, that is how that went. So it really pretty smooth, no problems at all. Got back on the bus and headed through Nicaragua. That went great. I was listening to my books on Audible a lot of the way. No, I'm not sponsored. I love the Sue Grafton novels. I'm on the very last one. I'm down to like an hour and a half left of the very final novel. I started listening on books on CD to the very first one, A is for Alibi, somewhere around 2000 when I was doing my commuting between Washington DC and Ithaca, New York. So these books are something I've been listening to on my commute for decades. It's crazy, almost 22 years, and I'm just about to finish the last book, and I'm hoping that Liesl has expressed interest in reading the books again with me, or maybe at the same time, um, and I didn't read the early books unabridged. So I'm starting to get the unabridged versions from uh, from Audible because I have a whole bunch of, like the first like I don't know 15 or 18 books on CD physical CD and most are abridged oh my gosh oh my gosh Ugh. dogs that was a family of five on a motorcycle almost hit a dog in the street it would have been bad for everybody babies in the street dogs in the, like oh my gosh the uh, so going back and listening to them unabridged, I think will be a lot better because there's a lot more like background story in the unabridged versions. And I haven't read a lot of them for about 20 years. So I'm excited to go back and do it. The thing that's really sad is Sue Grafton died before she completed the last novel in the series. It's a 26 novel series and she only did 25 of the novels. I don't know how this 25th one is gonna wrap up and what's missing from the 26th one. And she wouldn't let anyone finish the other one for her. So we'll never know what the final book was going to be. We're going to take a pause because the church will never stop. It takes about five minutes for them to stop the bell. All right, hopefully the bell's going to wrap up there. It was only four minutes long, so hopefully they don't go back to it. That was They did five minutes just 15 minutes ago. It's, it's a bit much. One of our uh, requirements in looking for a new house here is that we are unwilling to live by one of the churches again. The calls to prayer are uh, really uh, aggressive here. I've never seen anything like it. Um, I'm sure it's common all over the country, but definitely here in Labo Rio, it is such a huge portion of the day. They have so much noise pollution from the church. It's it's really something. Um, and and for some people, that's fine and they like it because it's, it makes for an interesting bit of the community. Uh, but for us, it really causes a lot of problems with the ability to work, uh, to record. Um, it scares the dogs. Uh, sometimes it's just music and stuff that makes it very difficult for recording. Um, but but it, it comes with a lot of negatives. And of course, they are the ones setting off the majority of the fireworks, which we really want to get away from. So we want to get to communities that have more noise ordinances or at least uh, a culture of being less noisy uh, for where we want to live, which means getting away from the, the city center a little bit, but that's okay, we're looking at that. So back to the bus, the bus ride went great and I really enjoyed the books. Um, that was nice and relaxing. The girls slept nearly the entire way. Dominica did, did well, it was nice and cool on the bus, so no problems for her and uh, we didn't have any major stops what they did do is take orders for a restaurant but there's no menu so we weren't sure what we could order and we were confused by the whole thing but we don't think they had any food for us anyway we're vegetarian for those who don't know and uh, so we didn't end up ordering anything we just had snacks on the bus that we already had uh, and didn't worry about it the girls slept through it, so it didn't matter. Anyway, uh, by the time we got pretty far north, which went really, the whole ride went really well and smooth. Like, no problems at all. The whole thing was only 12 hours long. Uh, one of the things I like in all kinds of buses here, but I'm surprised that things like the Nika Expresso have this happen too, but people get on and they're basically, in some cases, they're like, wandering snack shops, right? They have chips, they have like different kinds of snacks in like a big basket or whatever, and they'll go around and sell them much like they do on the minibuses. They also have these people who are essentially wandering restaurants and they're really impressive. And the whole system, I need to do a video about just the system of this, but the whole thing is really interesting and impressive. Like the amount of organization and skill and planning that has to go into some of the things that they do. And on this particular bus, at least on the one today, we had a Casillo vendor. And this woman got on, she had in a basket with all the stuff for making Casillos, the tortillas, the cheese, the crema, the uh, onion um, uh, uh, pickle sauce. And you would order your Casillo and she would 
assemble it, put it in a bag, make the whole thing and hand it to you, just like they do in a restaurant, right there on the bus. And she has moved to the bus, taking everybody's orders and making food. So she was a tiny little wandering restaurant and they do this in the streets too. Like sometimes a Casillo vendor will come down this street, for example. Uh, I've definitely seen them on this street. Um, and you can buy Casillos and they'll make it for you on the spot. And you'll get the same thing with like a Lote or the same thing with hot dogs or same thing with you know, several different food items. But to do this on a bus while the bus is moving, like the bus will hit a hard stop and she's just, you know, her whole restaurant, she just keeps it balanced and serves it for people, has a system and it's so impressive. Uh, so Dominica and I got Casillas and ate those on the bus. That was really our only food until we got home. Uh, Paul ordered pizza for us. So we had uh, Oasis del Sabor pizza waiting for us when we got back. Like I said, the bus ride was 12 hours, very easy. I would do that particular ride any day, no issue whatsoever. The getting up at four o'clock in the morning, I didn't like that. Other than that, the whole thing was, was really, really easy. Thank you to Nika Espresso for just a great ride. They really did a wonderful job. And even when the AC didn't work on the other trip, they did try really hard to get that fixed. They put in a real effort. So I, I applaud them for that. That was impressive, um, even though it didn't work. <laughs> and uh, uh, we got into Leon. It was dark. Paul picked us up in the new car, which we'll talk about in just a second. Came home, ate pizza, and the girls and I binge watched uh, season three of Stranger Things. We have one episode left to go. We will be watching that tomorrow, uh, I'm sure, um, and hung out with the dogs all evening. The dogs were so excited that we were home. Uh, they really miss their pack when we're not there, especially when four of us are not there. They get really nervous and it's, it's hard for them. So that was our day. All right, let's talk about the car. It's not that hot out, but I was cooking in the intense sun. All right, so we've been talking for the last year and a half about we didn't want to have a car. We decided not to have a car for a lot of reasons. It's really easy to use public transportation around Nicaragua. Having a car has a lot of cost and overhead, and it's just a lot to deal with as a foreigner. So in general, I don't recommend having one. And now we're getting a car. So why, what, what gives, what changed? Um, so there's a couple things that make us unique and it's, it's worth noting. And a lot of people, you may wanna have a car, you may wanna have a motorcycle, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. It's just, I tend to recommend people heavily consider whether you really want a car when you're coming here. Cause it's not like being in the US where you need one all the time. And it's not like in the US where you're used to all the things that go with it. There's a lot that may be surprising or a lot of overhead that you're just not prepared to deal with, especially when you first get here. Spend some time and then decide if it's something that you want. Also, it's nice to not have so many cars on the road. It's just good for the country, right? Having extra cars doesn't benefit people here. We don't make cars here, so there's no reason to, to need to sell them just for the sake of selling them. But if it's something you need, it's something you need. Now for us, what makes us unique? First of all, we have businesses over a large area. We live here in Leon. A lot of our businesses are out on the beach. Yes, we can go there by taxi, that's $12 each way. Yes, we can put three, four people in a car, so it's not terrible, but it adds up and it's very difficult to get a taxi in a deterministic way. Taxis can be up to an hour late picking you up. Yes, naked time. Um, often they're very fast, but many times they're not. Sometimes you can grab one on the street, but many times you can't. So if you wanna really know you're gonna be able to get somewhere at a specific time, it's difficult. And then if you're only taking a taxi, having everything ready to move things back and forth and dealing with like the the dogs, if you have to move them, very difficult. And sometimes we'd like to take more people than fit in a taxi, or at least comfortably. Uh, we'd also like the ability to, when we go to places that we that we uh, work, that we'd be able to have the trunk and, and store things in it, right? I just want to keep a camera with me and not lug it around and have to watch it every moment. I want to be able to put things in the trunk. We want to be able to send food back. Like right now while I'm making this video, I'm waiting for food to come by new car from the beach. And when we have a taxi, that's often very difficult because the kitchen can't time things because they never know when the taxi is going to arrive. And the kitchen isn't that deterministic in its speed either. So food from the kitchen may take 30 minutes or two hours, mostly depending on how busy the restaurant is. And we don't push them to try to be really specific with the time because they're servicing other customers. So that's fine. But it means a taxi, if they come really quickly, could end up waiting an hour just for our food to get ready. And that's a problem. But a taxi could come in 30 minutes or in two hours the same. So food may be ready and sitting for two hours before the taxi comes to get us and bring it back. In both ways, it becomes big problems just with getting food back and forth. And so much of our expenses are in food. Not the food's expensive here, but we look for variety and it's just, we have our own restaurants that we want to be eating at. We get lower food costs there and we're already paying for the labor. So it's actually just the cost of groceries and their groceries are a little bit cheaper than our house groceries in most cases. We need to be leveraging that, right? And it cuts down a lot of going out to eat. It doesn't reduce our grocery store time, it reduces our restaurant time. So it makes a lot of sense for us to eat a lot more from the beach that offsets a lot of costs. So that's a big factor for us 
as well. Um, we have uh, businesses that are far to the north that are extremely different than uh, here at uh, in Leon, and being able to go to them is a big deal for us because while we can take public transportation to the beach, it takes about 90 minutes, or a taxi, it takes uh, $12. Going north to the uh, businesses up there can take an hour and a half and can be like 40 to 80 dollars depending uh going up there and then sorry about that my gopro overheated in the shade it's been a really long time since that happened and it's not that hot of a day i have no idea the gopro is having a lot of problems but like i said it's old so bear with me two more months to go gopro 11 is coming for sure you're gonna love it not that it's gonna make that big of a difference it's gonna be a little bit better and hopefully uh much easier for me to work with so uh, I was saying, we have these businesses up in the north and we need to be able to go to them as well. And it can be very difficult to get up there because of the distance that we need to go. 90 minutes of travel uh, to get up to the restaurants uh, or whatever. And so if we need to take anything up there, we can't do it by moto. Doing it on the bus is nearly impossible. And a lot of things like when you, when you go to the restaurant, um, and you're done, it's after the time that the public uh, buses are running. So if you want to get back, either it's a very expensive taxi, they'll take a very long time because they got to drive up from Leon to, say, Chinandega, get us and then drive back. That's incredibly time consuming and very, very expensive because you got to drive both ways. And they have to drive both ways both times or you have to pay for them to sit for who knows how many hours you're going to be there. It could be like eight hours. Uh, or you got to get a hotel room before coming back the next day. And one of our bars, our big one is in El Viejo and there's only one hotel in El Viejo. And while they're not outrageously expensive, they are not a cheap place. They are for out of town business people. They're very nice. They're totally worth the money. Don't complain at all, love the place, but I don't wanna have to spend that much money when I'm gonna go just for, you know, checking out the bar, scoping things out or helping out or whatever, uh, or making a delivery. It's very difficult. So having a car to be able to do all the stuff up there, it's gonna be a really big deal for the business. So those things are important for us. And you will notice in those things, those are overland travel, not just zipping around the city. If I just need to zip around Leon, I'm gonna do it on foot the same as I did before, or Paul's gonna run around on the moto, same as he did before. We're not gonna take a car. Uh, so that's gonna be important in just a little bit. Also, with a lot of the stuff that I'm doing for you guys here on the channel, having the ability to get to out of the way parts of the country at any time are important. Yes, sometimes it's really important to take public transportation and share that experience with you, and I will certainly keep doing that. I enjoy taking public transportation. I like the challenges that come with it. That's a lot of fun, and I love that I can do a lot of things really cheaply. So showing you guys like, hey, I can go to Granada for the weekend for like 50 bucks. Here's the entire cost, including hotels, restaurants, everything. That's fun. Let's do that. Let's do stuff like that. But there's also, I'd like to go places that I need to rent a car or whatever, and having uh, the car to do that stuff is gonna make doing drive warp much easier because we can have it all set up to record in the car and out of the front windshield all the time. And uh, we can just go to places like Malpaisio that someone has asked me to go film. Yes, I can take the bus there, but it's a very lengthy time consuming process and taking the car makes it very easy. All right, so that's why we decided we needed a car. We have kids, we have dogs, we have business stuff, we cover a large area, and the channel. Those things make us relatively unique compared to most people. In general, I still don't recommend having a car. Now, why did we choose the car that we did? Notice a lot of our travels overland, and in many cases, we wanna do so with many people. And overland may include driving to things like San Jose, Panama City, Guatemala City. We wanna be able to do that stuff too, since we have a car. If we didn't have a car, we'd find other ways to do it, not a big deal, but it's nice to have those options as well as our corporate shopping in Managua that we currently have to rent a taxi to go do and it takes all day and it's extremely expensive and limiting as far as how we do it. You can't go to Managua and spend the night without it being another big problem. If you have a car, you have lots more options for that kind of thing. So makes sense for us. Again, need a lot more space because of those things. So we opted for a car that's a little bit larger. Now, if you're gonna be zipping around a city here, just intra-city driving, your best option is generally considered to be the Toyota Yaris. That's why most of the taxis are that. You also have a lot of good options from places like Hyundai and Kia, but Toyota is the big winner. Personally, I also would say that Nissan is at the top and Mazda, but Toyota has the best parts availability in the country. I believe Nissan's number two, followed by Hyundai, Kia, and then Mazda. Those are really your big five. Uh, with those, you pretty much can get parts anywhere. There's a few others that do pretty well, Suzuki, for example. Um, so you do have options, but Toyota is consistently at the top for maintenance, cost of ownership, and that kind of stuff. So when you are making a good business decision for intra-city travel, the Yaris tends to win. The Yaris being their tiniest uh, mainline car, it is their uh, metro car, right? It is designed for stop-and-go traffic and really tight city streets. 
When you're looking to do intercity traffic, you're going to be opening up to highway speeds, which are still not high here, but they are higher than city speeds, and going longer distances and often hauling more stuff. For that, the Yaris actually drops off in fuel efficiency, and it loses to the Corolla and Camry. The Corolla is the most cost-effective car for more long-distance travel, and so that is what we opted for. If you are looking to be on a budget but have the ability to invest to have the best overall price, the Corolla is the way to go. We managed to get a 2015 Corolla from a friend who we know the history of the car, we know it's low mileage, we know it's been well treated, it's a beautiful condition, white 2015 Toyota Corolla. It's hard to get much better than that as far as just practicality. Now someone did comment, now for overland travel, your best bet in the country is to have a truck. This is not good information, honestly, and we considered getting a truck and we would like to have a truck for certain reasons, but our reasons are for hauling things, not for ease of travel. And I want to talk about that because this is more of that American information, that gringo approach to things in Nicaragua. And what they're doing, right, is they're stating, oh, the roads are bad, it's tough to get around, so you need a truck. Completely false. The roads here are generally excellent. There are a few areas where having a truck would be beneficial, such as currently if you're going out to El Transito, which is not that far away, then it would be nice to have a truck. Not a place we're likely to go very often, but if we were, a truck is nicer than a car. But can a car go through? Yes, we did it in a Kia Soul last time we did it. No problem. And all those roads are in the process of being upgraded, so it's, it's a diminishing problem. That's the first thing. The second thing, the reason that we're so set on the Yaris and Corolla as cars to look at is fuel efficiency. Here, like everywhere else in the world, the cost of fuel has skyrocketed, and having a truck means the cost of maintaining that vehicle is astronomic. Fuel efficiency drives every car decision, unless you're some kind of millionaire today, right? The cost of filling up this Toyota Corolla, $63 here. Now, if it was in the States, it would be a little bit more probably, and we don't have to drive as far, so like those, those costs are not as, as, as burdensome here, but they are still really large. They're major concerns. If we had a truck, we would be spending at least twice as much per mile as we are. By the way, it's a five-speed. Everything is manual here, pretty much, so just assume. Um, so while a truck would be neat for some reasons, it's generally pointless, right? All the cities are passable by car and easier by car. The streets are relatively busy, whether it's people, motorcycles, other cars, whatever. Having a large vehicle makes you just that much more in the way to everyone else and makes it that much more difficult for you. Not a big deal. Lots of people have trucks. I would like a Hilux for sure, but practicality says it doesn't make sense. And if you're going long distance, any amount of long distance, you're going to be on perfectly well-maintained highways where the only thing you're concerned about is your ability to have low uh, cost per mile. Truck is the worst option for that. Even if you're going to the east coast on the other side of the jungle, great roads, you do not need to have a truck. When I lived here in 2015, it was a crossover period. Yes, most of the country was accessible by car and that made it easy, but there were areas where yes, you would wanna have a truck seven years ago, eight years ago. That was absolutely true, but I still probably in the situation that we're in would opt for a car because it is so much more cost effective, but today we can go anywhere by car we don't have the same issues. So if you're looking at, yes, if you're trying to make Nicaragua sound like it hasn't updated in decades, correct. Then it's easy to say, oh no, you need a truck because that's just how it is. That is not current information, it's not true information. Some people prefer trucks, some people need to haul things, some people need whatever. There's nothing wrong with wanting a truck. But if you're trying to tell people what makes sense in Nicaragua, a truck is not very likely to make sense as a transportation device. Hauling device, yes, transportation, no, very expensive and does not solve any real world problems. There are not problems getting around by car. There, you're gonna, this is consistently a problem we're seeing on the channel and in other forums I see about Nicaragua. People are always trying to sneak in this information that's misinformation, sounds like they're trying to be helpful and they're, they sound like they know something about the country. Oh, I've, I used to, I come from there. Maybe, we don't know. They don't, they don't tend to have enough information to be able to prove reliably that they actually came from a place and they'll say things that are very much in a pattern that only makes sense as an American and then they'll make statements that are very much like oh you have to have a truck because you can't get by the roads really have you seen the roads because I don't know where that would be I drive all over the country all the time and at no point do I say oh, it would be handy if I had a truck not at all I have not said that once in the two years that we've been here it's you know, it, 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 their situations can arise. We are not driving dirt roads into the jungle to go haul wood out of somewhere. We're not doing that stuff. Yeah, of course, if you're 
Same as in the U.S. Do you need a truck to drive around on the highway? No, but are there, could, are there jobs that, that benefit from a truck? Of course. That's what it comes down to. So watch out for those things because you'll find them constantly in the comments. People are trying to sneak in, whether it's advice or like information that's partially correct with a lot of misleading suggestion behind it. Oh, you don't want to do that thing because of this other thing. And, and it's the other thing that they're trying to state. They're trying to make a statement, right? And so in this case, I think someone's trying to make a statement, trying to imply that the roads are bad, right? When they are not, they're fantastic. Watch my drive warp episodes. You will see how beautiful the roads are. You do not need a truck. Again, if you want one, great. I want a Hilux, it will be cool. But the Toyota Corolla makes a lot of sense because it's big enough, it holds our luggage, it holds our entire family with a driver. Um, it can work for drive warp, it gets by on any road, and it's the most cost-effective thing to own, which is generally the most important thing to consider. That is it for us on today's episode. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Comments below. Please don't make negative comments with, with loaded questions or loaded suggestions. Um, that is the big thing, right? And, and if you don't know what that is, look up uh, logical fallacy loaded questions it is a uh, it is a standard type of misleading um, argument that is uh, really really effective in convincing people something is true that you never actually stated or backed up right you make one claim based on the other claim the, the based on is the thing you're actually trying to pro promote the, you could argue the lot the people would be like oh I don't I don't care about the result right I don't care that you that you think you should have a truck or not what I tried to do is, is convince you that they had bad roads, right? That's the logical fallacy is hidden because you're, you're distracted looking at the answer to your question rather than that they, they misled you with, with false facts to base that on, and that's what they were trying to do. Anyway, look that up. Uh, but <laughs> uh, if you would like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee, links down below, and share with your friends, let people know about the channel. I will see. I came outside to do some recording and came to the realization that this space where I often use as a studio and do my just jump out real quick and record some shorts for you guys or record in, in bad weather or just a lot of logistic stuff I record out here, including my camera cafe show. Uh, this is now our parking lot for the new car. That's gonna pose a real problem. The car is in here right at the moment. And I came out to record and said, oh my gosh, the car is gonna be here shortly. What am I gonna do? Ah, uh, that's a problem. However, we are beginning house hunting for a new house for ourselves starting tomorrow. So this may not be a thing for too long. We do have this house for about four more months. So it, for that's about 16 weeks, 17 weeks. So that gets us into early next year. So things aren't going to change before then. But because of the car, because of a lot of things, because parking in here is very difficult coming off the street. We're on a very major road. It's a, it's a big problem. So... We are looking for a place where I'm going to have some studio space or something that's going to make the parking, the dogs, the studio, all of that stuff quite a bit easier. So hopefully some of that will be resolved for, for you guys. We are going to sadly be leaving Labo Rio. That is a given. There is simply not the space that we need in Labo Rio. But now we have a car. It is easier for us to be a little bit farther outside of the city center. We don't have to be able to walk everywhere all of the time. I do hope to be somewhere where I can still walk, but maybe not the kids in Dominica walking places and Paul takes a motorcycle anyway. So not such a big deal. That is, that is the current plan. Um, getting a car really changed a lot of things as far as like the space that we need. We are already ready to be looking for something, but because we have a car, we have new needs and new possibilities. And that's going to be part of the fun of this channel is we're just renting. So we're constantly looking to uh, change our lives to some degree, um, and that brings more interest to the channel, more neighborhoods to explore more easily. Once we have the car, once we get used to using the car, I'm going to get that all set up for drive warp and all kinds of stuff. So it's going to be exciting, but in the meantime, that's going to be a problem here. I'm only going to be able to record in this space when the car is not here, and I don't always control when that is. So yeah, that's, that's a whole new thing. All right, hold on. Just wait there. We're, no, we're not done yet. Were you like getting up to leave or something? Because like, did you have like some feeling I was wrapping up? Cause I was not like, there's more to do. I don't know what you were thinking that you could just leave. That's, that's not how it works. I have to dismiss you with the regular ending. I know you feel like I was leading up to it, but I, I wasn't, okay? So trust me, what is today? Today's October 15th, what does that mean? That means something really big today. 
this day, I saved this to the end because we had a lot going on today, so I didn't want to jump in with all of this early on because it's only so exciting, but it's exciting to me. Today is three years since we started the daily vlog. I have a couple of older episodes, but they weren't really vlog episodes. They're just good content that I decided to keep on the channel. There's only four episodes of that, so we'll add those in on days when we don't have anniversary days. But today we have a three-year anniversary episode. What does that mean? One, I want to talk about it, and two, I want you to go watch it. Now, I know I'm kind of asking a favor, but it's not that long, right? My early episodes were really weak, and I think this is kind of interesting because you'll see in a minute why, but how do you go watch it? One, I'm going to try to put a link to it in the, like the end credits, so if you watch to the end, which you should, then you'll have a link to it right there, and I'll try to put a link down in the description to make that easy for you. Like, I'm going to try to make this easy. I'll do my part. I'm asking you to do yours, which is go watch the episode, give it a like, and maybe even leave a comment, say happy anniversary or whatever. But so what happened three years ago today? This is actually really interesting. Not only did I do my first episode and talk about how I was starting a vlog and how I missed doing podcasts in the past and how I had been struggling with my writing every day on my, on my written journal, sheepguardinglama.com which I've not updated in a long time. I will someday, I gotta get back to that too, but not right now. But, so I, I talked about that, but the really interesting thing, other than kind of giving this, and I still feel all these years later, right, this is a vlog that I record for my dad. I give him an update on my life. It is something that is really important to me because I'm creating a record, originally a written record, and now a video record, which is actually far more interesting for my children, Lisa and Luciana, who will be able to look back in the many decades to come and see where we were, what we were doing, and what we look like what the world was back in their childhood uh, as they were growing up. So I think this is really important. From that perspective, they are, of course, 13 and 11 now. So they were 10 and eight at the time that we started the vlog. So, so you know, a very large portion of their childhoods happened during this vlog. But also three years ago today, we had just booked our flight and hotel for Alan and Rachel and I to go to Nicaragua because we were living in Texas. Well, Rachel and I were living in Dallas, Texas, and Alan was living in Salt Lake City, Utah. And Alan was interested, he and I have been talking for a number of years, about whether Nicaragua and most likely San Juan del Sur would be a great retirement or long-term planning location for him. And so he's flying to Dallas in the, in the next couple of days. This is three years ago going to meet up with us in Dallas, and all of us are going to fly down to Nicaragua, into Managua. We're going to go down to San Juan del Sur. We're going to hang out for a week, and then we're going to go, or almost a week, and we're going to go up to Granada and show some, some city life, but he's really interested in living on the coast, and we're going to go check that out because uh, I really feel Nicaragua is a great choice for him. He's really excited. He thinks that Nicaragua sounds fantastic, but he's never visited anywhere outside of the U.S. before, so he's very apprehensive and worried, but he's also very much getting ready just in case he decides not to come back. He's getting his dogs ready in case they need to be shipped. He's got like plans in place that he actually won't have to get onto the plane to come home if he decides that it's that awesome in Nicaragua. So this is a huge moment. For those who watch the channel, you know that I ended up moving back to Nicaragua. We had lived there previ here previously, and that Alan moved quite some time ago as well. He's been here more than a year. So at this point in the vlog, you know, looking back as an anniversary, uh, you know that this trip ended up being a momentous trip. And today's the day that we got everything booked. So as a three year anniversary, looking back day, this is a really cool one to look at because at the time it was like, ah, I'm thinking about starting a vlog, assuming it was just gonna be my video diary to my dad and a, and a record for my kids. And Alan and I are going to Nicaragua thinking that it's just gonna be a, a you know casual trip and there was a really high chance that Alan was going to decide not to move abroad. That's always a really unlikely scenario even for people who are seriously considering it and taking the effort to go investigate a new place you still don't expect them to actually decide to move and we had not yet decided to move back to nicaragua we loved it we had always loved it but it had never hit our radar as the place to go back to we had talked about it a little bit and the company had done quite a bit of discussions about investing more and more of the company into Nicaragua, putting more staff here, and possibly having housing and some long-term plans that most likely involve Nicaragua. But it was very, it was very fanciful, far off in the future. And we did talk a lot about if we wanted Nicaragua to be a place where we would spend a lot of our time 
but never be a home base. It would be quite a while yet before, well, months, before we really had the discussion about that. And you'll see that in our retrospective, our throwbacks on this channel, on the vlog. But this was just me taking Alan down so he could see Nicaragua and make some initial decisions so that he would have a real idea of what it was like. And, and that, was, that was three years ago today. And we have a video of me talking about it. Now the video is awful, so bear with me. It's just me with my, I think it was a Samsung Galaxy at the time that I just leaned up on my desk in Carrollton, Texas in my little office room, which we don't have that house anymore. So those videos are now the, the big record of that house, which was the house that my children grew up in. So that as a throwback uh, is a very important thing for me as well. This look into the home that we, it will always be their childhood home, right? No matter how old they get, that will most likely be the house that they associate with their childhood. They also lived in Peekskill, New York in that house, but even, even Liesl barely remembers it and Luchana has almost no memory of it whatsoever. The house in Carrollton will always be the iconic, this is the house that I remember as my childhood for them the way that the farmhouse uh, that is long gone uh, in Peoria, New York is for me. It's, it's a really cool moment that the vlog, three year anniversary goes back to those, so many events, right? On that day were happening that we, we just had no idea how that was gonna play out and how iconic that particular moment was going to be. So when I'm done here, I encourage you, please go, give it a like, give it a watch, only 36 views of that initial episode after all these years uh, have ever been done. So we'll be able to keep track and see how many new views pop up. And I know it's not gonna be a lot, but it would be really cool if we got like another 50 or even 100 views would be fantastic. Really, we'll be lucky if we get 10, but I'm asking just please go watch and like. You don't have to pay that close of attention. It's not very good, but it's gonna get more interesting as we do the throwbacks. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe, all that stuff. I already said, and past Scott, I'm throwing it back to you. Take it away. All of you, tomorrow.